Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is a uh, fun new project called The Movement. Uh, we're powered by Davinus. We've got uh, James from the Beehive and myself, Curtis, uh, from Design House Salon, two Davinus uh, salons from um, the east and west coast, or the east meets the west, I guess, uh, for this show. This series is going to be on new beginnings for uh, 2016, and we've got an interesting topic today. We're going to be talking about uh, New Year's resolutions and some positive mental attitudes for 2016. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a busy time right now. You're pretty, you're pretty pumped about uh, the new year, James? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, it's a great time for us to reflect on the things that we could have done better or, or a great time to implement changes, um, especially if there's things that you've always wanted to do in the salon it's great to be able to do it and use New Year's almost as the excuse, like, hey, we're going to start this or we're going to, you know, we're going to implement this new policy with staff or we're going to start this new practice in terms of the way we intake new clients or the way we introduce retail and things to them. So it, I think it's a really important time for, for change. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, this is going to be uh, released to a bunch of salons. Um, you're maybe meeting us for the first time at the Worldwide Hair Tour in January. So if we've met you there and you're going to be watching this afterwards, um, yeah, enjoy this this new series. I'm really pumped about this. Uh, perfect timing when it comes to salon. Um, you know, industry making some New Year's resolutions, um, really looking at uh, your business. There's going to be some key things that are going to be coming up and we're going to be, um, like I said, this is about a series of, of new beginnings. So we're going to have a couple more um, topics throughout this, this time. But today we're really going to be talking about, um, you know, about some New Year's resolutions, mainly about positive mental attitudes, about you know setting the framework, the right mental space to be able to actually um, you know, get, get down and dirty with the things that you need to do for the year and then, um, and start really strong and uh, take the things that you've learned from the past year and really start to implement that into the new year. So, uh, James, why don't you kick us off with a couple, um, a couple points here? Yeah, I, I think it's important. Curtis and I spent some time and we looked at, um, yeah, a lot of these things are basic things that we should all know. And, and I know from the salon management perspective, Curtis and I have the same conversations that it's great when you have a, a family of, or staff that really works well together, but there's always some things that they could do better to get them to that 100%. Sometimes it's minor details, sometimes it's major details, but we hope that um, in a, being able to share this list that we've come up with that maybe it sparks something, maybe your stylists watch it and they say, wow, you know, that kind of spoke to me because these are things that I should look to change. But I think the number one thing that, um, especially for us, we do a lot of training of new stylists here, uh, it's appearance. I mean, you know, um, it, it's, you know, we have this running joke, you say fake it till you make it in the salon. But, you know, reality of it is if you're not dressed in a way or your hair's not done or your makeup's not done in the salon, you, know, you bring that new client in and they look at you and they think, why, why is, you know, why is that person the expert? Why should they tell me anything? Um, whether it's their color, whether it's their style, um, you're going to attract whatever you put out into the universe, no matter what, from a karmic perspective. But it's also going to be first, you know, first impressions without a doubt. What, what do you think about that, Curtis? Yeah, first impressions are massive. Um, these are these are actually things uh, some people out there might think, well, no, we've got that covered. Uh, no problem in our salon about appearance, makeup, people doing their hair, good uh, fashion forward clothing. Um, but I'm going to tell you the truth. We do have an issue at times in our salon with certain individuals. And it's a very difficult topic to bring up with some people, especially if you've gotten new people and I think that's what you're saying James is that you're bringing a lot of new people in that you're training them up front they may have just been getting out of school they're they've uh, put out you know 20,000 bucks for schooling and now they're starting their new job and you know it's their first month maybe they don't have you know the same fashion forward clothing that um, is is uh, that they need for the job um, they're gonna have to build up they have to, they have to get some paychecks <laughs> into the bank account before they can start buying some new clothes so you know it is a little bit tough at first and you'd think you know what you're in a fashion forward industry you're a hair salon you know you'd think that you'd walk into a salon and and, st and stylists would have their hair done perfect and they spent you know an hour doing their hair before they get to work and the tough part is the reality is is that there's lots of styles that show up with buns in their hair and you're like what in the world where did you possibly think that that was okay to do um or another one is front end coordinators you know like having um if you've got a front end person or receptionist they might not be a hairstylist um they may not be as fashion forward as a, as a hairstylist would be or they maybe were wearing too much makeup or not enough that's a tough conversation to have with people but um i would say if i can just give you one last uh quick uh, hint for this is 
have somebody responsible for keeping up the parents. And the best person is usually the worst person on your team. And that may sound terrible, but this is, this is the idea. It's very difficult conversation to have with that person. So if you pick them and you say to them, this is our standard, this is what we're looking for. And I need your help. I need you to be that person, that front person in the salon to be able to be, um, you know, be the, not the policeman, but maybe the um, encourager in the salon to be able to hold up the standard. Then that way, as a salon owner, you're not always looking like the bad guy. You might have a huge salon that you've got management that does this kind of thing. But for small salons, this is a big deal. You don't always want to be the bad guy every day for the staff. Um, for us, we have a front end coordinator that um, is a, one in charge of that. And so if, if a stylist shows up with a bun, it's, hey, grab you know whoever is available. I see that somebody's going to break in their schedule for 30 minutes. Go and ask them to do your hair um, for you because you know, a bun's just not going to cut it today. And, uh, and to I love it. Slack off, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, it's a good way too to empower them, you know, in their own team. I, I think that's a perfect idea. As a matter of fact, I, it's something I'm writing down um, that I think I'm going to try to implement as part of our New Year's resolutions. I mean, we don't typically have the problem, but like I said, in training some of the newer stylists, there's just a very different mindset I feel like now with some of the people that get out of school. And maybe I'm getting old, and and I don't know what it is, but um, you know, it's a career. It's not a job. Um, I feel like anyone I know that's been super successful in the hair salon or, or hair industry in general has looked at it like a career and anyone I've known that looked at it like a job, it's been just a job and it's been horrible for them and they haven't survived. So I think that's a great point, Curtis, uh, that moves us into our, our next point. It's, um, you know, really maintain a positive and enthusiastic mental attitude. I mean, that's one of the topics that we wanted to talk about today was positivity uh, anyone can tell you that positivity is contagious. Uh, your clients appreciate the positivity. I mean, they are going to spend a lot of money with you. They're going to spend a lot of time with you. Um, they really want to come in and have that overall experience. So, you know, make it a point to to try to ditch the negativity for 2016. Not that everyone has it in their salons, but you know, always look on the on the bright side of how things can can be and and look for. You know, we're looking forward to a good year, and I hope everyone else is. Yeah, James, you know, it's tough uh, coming out of December, you know, some people might be coming on a on a high note, some people might be really worn out. Um, you're getting your most of your calls, you're having, you know, may, maybe working extra hours, maybe you're having some staff issues, um, maybe you've lost some stylists in your salon, maybe you're getting some new ones. There's a lot of pressure going on in the salon industry um, during December and coming into January. So you're right, it does you have to actually maybe take a step back and really look at the way you view um, your upcoming year and think to yourself, okay, I'm tired, but I don't want to project my tiredness or, or anything else onto my stylist or onto my, um, onto my uh, clients. And maybe you'll just say a couple more things about that. Just in the daily operations of the salon, especially right now in December, if you're thinking about it, you're getting a lot of calls. And the first thing I hear a lot about from salon owners and uh, even from myself um, at times is that, oh my goodness, the phone's ringing, the phone's ringing, and I can't get to all these people that are get, trying to get them in for their appointments. And you know they're upset because they can't get in with their stylist and they got overbooked or whatever the situation may be. And you know, you have to watch how much you're projecting out there to people and even on the phone and your attitude, you know, if, if you're wishing that you have less calls, you know, you better be careful what you wish for because you might get it in the new beginnings of January. You might get a lot less calls. Yeah. That's having too many calls is a good problem. Yeah. That, that's absolutely right. And, and we try to do that here too, where we try not to get frustrated. I know what happens during the holidays too is, you know, we were lucky. We had been booking for months in advance. And obviously, you know, besides the holidays, you had the worldwide hair tour coming up in January. So we had most of our main clients conditioned to to book out not just just their next appointment, but sometimes their next two, if not three. And inevitably you have those people, you know, college kids that are home for the, you know, for the holidays and, and people that try to get in and, you know, the people that wait 16 weeks that want to come back for a full highlight. That's not an easy one to squeak in somewhere. And we just try not to get frustrated. I mean, you know, I can't tell you how many times I'm looking at the completely booked week and, you know, I put them on hold and I said, let me see what I can do for you. And, you know, at least they feel a little bit better. Like we actually tried to accommodate them, even if we couldn't. Um, but I feel like that's the biggest thing is that, you know, I always laugh. The second I get on a ladder to change the highest light bulb in the salon, that's when three lines ring at the same time. So my running joke is you better hope a lot of light bulbs burn out here because that's always a good problem. 
<laughs> yeah, that is a good one too. And, and you know what? And climate, you know, let's take that analogy a little bit step further and maybe get into our next point. Um, surrounding yourself with positive people to be able to maintain that positive influence. Um, you know, if you look at you know your salon business or just life in general as climbing a ladder, who do you want to have around you while you're doing that? Probably not feeling as though your whole staff is hanging off your legs, off your belt, off your arms while you're trying to climb that ladder. So if you're thinking that way, if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling as though you're drag, you're pulling the team forward and you're, 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 everything is on your back to be able to hold that, then maybe you need to start looking at um, you know, your boundaries with regards to what you're doing this long. And maybe you need to surround yourself with certain individuals and maybe um, you know, give other people some more responsibilities or more duties or, or have them be part of the team a little bit more because, you know, like I always said, it, I always surround myself with, with angels, with wings, rather than, you know, a bunch of people with lead boots, you know, hanging off of me because, you know, it's, it's a tough climb as it is, let alone having people drag you down. Yeah, I agree. And I think that empowering your staff, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, it was something that we had on our list last year to, to be able to do. And, you know, from Aaron, we know what certain staff members are really strong, you know, what their strongest suits are. So whether it's a specific type of hair or uh, from retailing. So, you know, we've tried throughout the year this year to to really implement different things to give them some power to be able to either do education for the salon itself. And, you know, and Curtis and I will always have the same dilemma that a smaller salon, sometimes they look at you in a meeting when you say, OK, you're going to be the one in charge of the product knowledge training to one of your staff members. And they look at you like, wait, we all have lunch together. Like this is, um, you know, so you try to show them that sometimes a small salon that acts like a big salon just continues to grow. Um, and it really gives them something, so, you know, something to give back in terms of the message and something important that's a value to the, to the entire team. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, you're, if, if you're the salon leader or if you're a stylist in your, in your salon and you've got a, a bunch of other stylists around you, you know, it's kind of the old saying, you know, if you're the crab in the bucket and you're in a, with a bunch of other crabs, even if you get one claw out onto the top of the bucket, another, another crab will grab you and pull you back in with them. So there is going to be some, some effort to get feel as though you're getting out of the pail. Well, the, the trick is, is that you just have to be able to see where you're going and be able to communicate that with your actions, with your positive mental attitudes, with um, making some, some proper resolutions, ones that you're actually going to be able to enact and not, you know, um, you know, be able to not feel guilty about not getting to. Um, we've got a whole series of stuff that's going to be coming out for the new year. Um, we want to encourage you to be able to, you know, subscribe, um, join us for all of our calls. Um, you know, you can take part in these calls in the future with us as well. If you miss one, you know, practice some kindness to self. Um, you know, allow yourself to be able to have the time to maybe, you know, read a really great book that has nothing to do with the salon industry, have a glass of wine and get involved in a novel, um, really just set up your boundaries, but be really clear with what you want to accomplish that's realistic and reasonable for the new year. And maybe make us part of that, that prescription of, of positive um, resolutions that you're going to be able to work on throughout your, throughout this next year. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Curtis. And that, you know, in terms of the positivity, um, I think, you know, another big thing is, you know, you're in the salon with a lot of hours, with a lot of the same people day to day. Um, you know, you never want to look at it as a total grind. But one of the things that I think that's really important is that you respect everyone else's point of view, um, whether it's salon related or not. I think, um, you know, it's important. You don't have to agree with everything everyone says or what their points are, but, you know, you definitely should look at it like it's family, just like any other family dinner. You know, you're not going to agree with your uncle across the table politically or religiously or anything else sometimes. But, you know, once it's in salon, I think that's a really big thing is is kind of getting that positivity to to really go through everybody within the staff. And it, And like I just said before, it's contagious. I mean, the positive attitude definitely can't be you know, it can't be put away to the side. Yeah, we're magnetic um, beings. Uh, as as you know, with your clients, you know, coming in, they, they want to see typically you or be in your environment. You'll notice that you'll just start getting a, a natural organic following. Um, you're right. You're totally right. All, all attitudes are absolutely contagious. Unfortunately, a lot of times the negative ones are sometimes feel a little stronger, um, a little bit more cancerous in um, in teams at times. Um, and that's why it's extremely important for the leader to be really comfortable 
um, with where they're at. And if you're not the leader in your salon, if you're a stylist um, and you've got your resolutions about maybe making your environment a little bit more positive, you know, start with small steps for yourself. Start, start allowing yourself to be able to be that positive um, person in the salon and, and encourage whoever is your leader in your salon, encourage your salon owner, the manager, whoever it is, you know, and, and say to them, you know, like, Hey, I noticed that, um, you know, you're doing your hair awesome this year, or I noticed you're starting to wear, you know, you're dressing up a little bit more this year. That's amazing. Like you look awesome. I'm really, you know, you look great. Or I noticed that you're putting a little bit more work into retailing this year. That's exciting. I really want to help you out with this retailing aspect. I really want to, you know, um, you know, be there and part of the team aspect. Yeah. And I agree. And it's funny because, um, you know, as, as, men in the salon industry doing the, the components that we do as not being hairstylists. It's really interesting because I know on the European side of the fence, you have a, you maybe have 50, 50 or even more, you'll have men in salon as hairstylists where here in the North America market, you have a lot more women and women can be so evil and mean to each other um, that it's just, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I never thought guys were, Guys are a little more brotherhood related, maybe. I don't know what it is, but it's just funny for my end, just, you know, telling someone from the positive side that, you know, something minor. Hey, I love the shoes. Hey, I love the hair. Hey, I love the makeup, you know, especially from the owner side. Sometimes I feel like if there's stylists that are on these calls, um, you, know, you definitely should go back and think about how hard it is to be an owner and the responsibility alone that they feel in terms of training in terms of payroll, in terms of the things that they do, especially at the end of the year, because you come off a benchmark month, everybody could be completely packed. That just means more payroll tax, more sales tax, more things that they have to worry about. And then you get into the whole accounting and the scheduling and things for the new year. Maybe your insurance is coming back due and, you know, some things that you need to think of that, you know, sometimes it's nice to be able to spread that positivity upwards, um, just like you'd expect or, or would like to get it down when you do a good job. I, I think it's super important to be able to go back to, your owners and managers and really just say, Hey, you know what? It was a great year. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for setting up that class. Thanks for whatever it is and, uh, and help spread the positivity. And, and, you know, like Curtis says, it's, it's a magnetic thing. Humans are magnetic beings. It just really will lend itself well to your salon. I believe. A really great um, hint for anybody out there that's looking for a way to change their environment right off the bat really quickly and easily get rid of the trash magazines in the salon. And you know what, all the styles out there, you know, some of you may really like hate this idea that I'm just bringing up here right now is say all, oh, you know what, no, my clients love it. That's why they come to the salon is to look at these magazines and, and trust me, when you get rid of them, your clients will be like, Hey, where, where did this magazine go? What, what's going on with this? All you have to do is say, you know what, we're just taking a little bit different a turn, turn this year. We're going to actually bring in some magazines that um, are a little bit more towards, you know, like the Davinus brand itself, a little bit more towards wellness and holistic beauty. Um, how about, you know, I've, I've replaced it with um, some yoga magazines and some stuff about meditation and um, that kind of thing. Start, start changing yourself, start doing the small little bit in the salon, and that'll have a noticeable difference. When they're not looking through that magazine and looking through the, you know, the sarcastic or, um, uh, you know, backstabbing type comments or really negative things going on in the in the industry, talking about other people behind their backs or anything like that. If you start having these kind of magazines in your shop, all of a sudden your clients will just have a different attitude and it'll have different conversations. And these kind of things are going to be very infectious to your environment and to your clientele. Yeah. And you know what? That's that's actually a great point. Um, we do color in a separate room from the front of the salon. And so, you know, you have some things on, on the coffee table in front. And to be honest with you, we've gone more coffee table book style um, and, and kind of cycle them out and just throw some interesting things, whether it's on astrology or, you know, it, it could be any any topic at all. And, and it's kind of fun for us. And it's kind of fun to see the reaction that they get. And you know, usually if we have magazines in the front here, being a holistic environment that we are, and I know Curtis, you're the same way, uh, it's uh, Organic Spa Magazine, it's the Yoga Magazines, it's Vegetarian Times, it's a bunch of these magazines that are there. And those are the most stolen magazines that we have in the salon, besides the food magazines during the holidays. So that was, you know, um, that... The, but reality of it is those are the ones that I constantly have are, you know, when they're when they're kind of straightening up, they're the ones that they're always bringing back to the front 
because they're the ones that people are kind of starting to read in the waiting area and then it's resonating enough with them that they carry it over into the, into the other room, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's just, and and these are the kind of points that we're gonna we're gonna be giving you guys um, in the future. We're gonna be able to have you, some of you on the calls with us, and you'll be able to give our your ideas as well, or put uh, some of your comments in the side. Um, we're doing all this series on um, uh, a new media called Blab. Um, it's found at blab.im, and uh, you can log in with your Twitter account, and then you can join us on the calls. We'll have them scheduled at certain times. Uh, you'll be able to subscribe and get updates from when that's gonna be happening. You can pop on the call, or you can watch it on our website and uh, watch these recordings. Um, we're gonna keep this one a little bit um, uh, a little bit shorter than normal because uh, we don't have anybody uh, chiming in right now. And uh, we've got a bunch of really interesting and exciting things to talk to you about in the New Beginning series. And um, so let's, uh, unless you have anything else to add, James, as a, do you want to maybe uh, let's do a quick closing remark and uh, leave it at that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's a great point, Curtis. I mean, reality of it is that this project, the movement, it's only going to get stronger the more interaction we get. Uh, we'd love to have people on these calls with us. We'd love to hear comments and things that that people want to know about, uh, whether it's something we can answer right away or something we have to go back to the trenches or whether it's a Davidus corporate question or, or anything. You know, we're here and Curtis and I are very connected within the community to be able to bring those answers to you. And we, we enjoy it. This is what we do all day. Um, I, I think the final thing for the planning or, or the start of this new beginning series and, and resolutions is really going to be the actual plan itself. Um, you know, we are going to bring a marketing calendar to you as part of our, our new series here uh, for things that you can do. But, you know, reality of it is it's it's like the diet theory, right? Most people, it's probably one of the highest things that people try to put on their New Year's resolution list is to go on a diet. And, you know, I'm sure the failure rates are super high percentages and things like that. But, you know, from our perspective and what we're doing, don't if you fall off the wagon that's fine if you build the marketing calendar and you try to implement these things and and something happens and it doesn't happen right away as long as you have that plan and it's clear for where you want to go uh, don't set unrealistic goals for the year you know don't automatically say hey january i want our retail sales to jump up to 30 percent because it's not easy to attain so make the goals manageable but um, you know, definitely don't be afraid to get back in it if you if you don't accomplish it the first time. I think a lot of struggles that salon owners have and, and stylists have is they try once and it doesn't work and they don't go back into doing it. So we definitely want to help encourage you to, to make that list and to stick with it. And, you know, we're here as a support system for you as well to, to kind of get you there. A any last closing notes for you, Curtis? Yeah, I guess the only other thing that I would say is just that um, there's help out there. And a lot of uh, stylists or owners um, may feel as though that it's it's an isolated uh, community, that it's tough to talk to other other owners um, about these kind of things because it kind of feels like you're in competition or you've got something, you know, that a certain image that you want to portray of success. Um, but as as a salon owner, I know that it's tough, and we don't always succeed. We have had did a lot of we've had a lot of failures. We have had a lot of successes. In our attitude is that being contributing to a sustainable environment within salons is about um, just sharing and giving back to the community. I look at you know my commitment to the salon industry and about this project. It's just like a marriage. You know, you get what you put in. And if what I'm saying and making a commitment to all of you for this new year is that um, I'm going to be here. Uh, I know James has, has made a commitment to also be here. Uh, we're going to be doing, we're going to bring out these, these topics in this series throughout the next, um, next year or so. They're going to be recorded. So you're going to be able to have some time to catch up with them if you don't catch it live, but just make, if, if you can make a small commitment, make this commitment, just try, just, just make one step forward because there is no change that's going to happen unless you make one step. So the next step, watch another video. Right after this, watch one more of these, make some notes, make some actual goals that you can accomplish. And I'm really excited about talking about a few of the other topics in the next series coming up. Absolutely. Me too. I uh, just want to thank everybody that, that was live on the call today. We did have a few people jump in with us, which we appreciate. Um, definitely, like Curtis said, you know, take the next step. We, we definitely are here to help you. Um, we're hoping to make this a little more personal and be able to do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one with other salon owners and stylists as well. Uh, we look forward to, to part two of the New Beginning series uh, on some other good resolutions and uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, Curtis. You're the best as always. Thank you. Peace.